Golos is compared to a pit. When Yosef was in the pit, the Medrash on, on that story says, compares many things that happened to Yosef happened to Tzia and to the Jewish people. Just like Yosef is in the pit, Jewish people are in exile. And Yosef's going out of the pit is compared to how the Yidden will go out of Golos. Yosef went out with enormous speed. It happened like Pisom. It happened very quickly. So too we will go out of Golos. And the moment it comes, it will, it will be really strong. Um, now, when a person is in a pit, you don't really have perspective. All you see is this dark pit, and you don't really know what's going on outside. You're very limited. Um, so in Gullus, we don't really have the, we don't know the end. We don't know when, 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 it's gonna, when it's gonna conclude. But when a person is in a pit, they could sense if they see from outside the window that there is a lot of movement going on, there is commotion going on. So that gets a sense that something is happening, even though you don't know why. And it gets your hopes up. I think that recently there has been a lot of movement going on, which is something we should notice. In addition to what's been happening the last couple of years, in addition to this virus that has suddenly hit the entire world, and uh, these are all obviously signs of Mashiach, but just a update regarding things that have been going on just literally the last couple of days. So one of the things to take notice is that a major threat to the well-being of the Jewish people is the Iranian regime. So over the last couple of years, this horrible regime has been slowly being weakened and broken and literally suffocating. It started with uh, when President Trump pulled out of the Iranian deal and then put enormous sanctions on Iran, started weakening them, then by killing their top general, Soleimani. And finally, uh, now one of the things they did was in order to be a menace and a threat to the safety of the Jewish people in Israel, they parked themselves in Syria. And, but Israel has taken a very aggressive stand and every time, in every possible situation, they bombed them. Just last week, we got the news that the Iranians are moving out. And that is phenomenal news regarding Moshiach, which involves the Yishaftem Lovetach Ba'artzachem, you're gonna be safe in your land. The other element that just happened, there is an element regarding the Giyula, which is similar to Mitzrayim, when it says, Lamaki Mitzrayim Bivchoyreyem, that the Mitzrayim themselves were beating the Mitzrayim. So just the other day, there was this misfiring that happened by the revolutionary god of the Iranians, where they killed their own soldiers, which general, the revolutionary guard, is not up to any good in this world. And it's interesting, the n- amount of soldiers that were killed were 19 which is a significant number right now because the epidemic, the global ec- epidemic is COVID-19 and the number of soldiers were 19. 19 is a significant number when it comes to the Giyula because 19 is the number of Sphiris HaMalchus. And we're talking about Malchus, the, the kingship of the Abish to being revealed in the world. And as discussed, I'm gonna have time in a short, a short video to explain how 19 is related to the Giyula. The other thing that's interesting is one of the major obstacles to Moshiach is that, er, is that those who claim that Eretz Yisrael does not belong to the Jewish people, it's stolen land, like Rashi says in the first Rashi of the Torah, that the nations will say it is stolen land. Who is the claim? The claim is we took it from the Palestinians. The Palestinians have been making this claim all along, and they've been backed by the Arabs, by billions of Arabs. The amazing thing is that just the last two weeks, the, the Palestinians got into a fight with the Saudis, in general, we've been seeing that all the Gulf states have been changing their attitude towards Israel. But particularly, just recently, when, they were, when their oil went down, the Palestinians started making fun of them. The, the Saudis got very, very offended, and they publicly condemned the Palestinians and made fun of them, and, claimed, and said openly that the Palestinians have no right to Eretz Israel. As a matter of fact, they're not even Arabs. They don't even belong there. The land is purely Jewish land. To have an admission of the other side to admit so, so publicly, is a transformation of darkness to light. Not only that, regarding the Makam Amigdash, the place, Temple Mount, where they, where they have their mosque, which they claim is theirs, and it's a right for their religion, the Saudis, who are kind of the keepers of the religion, they're the ones who have Mecca by them, claim that that's Baba Mises, that's not true. It's not their place. This other mosque where they claim Muhammad went up is not even there. So to hear this from the Saudis, is a real, real major admission. The next thing that is happening that is astonishing is that we've just found 
this week a rear stone from the Bar Kochva era. And this was found in Yerushalayim, right next to the Temple Mount, which is researchers or those uh, the, the, the heading, heading of uh, archaeology were actually stunned that you can find these coins there because we know that the Bar Kochva revolt uh, did not reach Yerushalayim. And yet they found this coin. Uh, they say maybe the Roman soldiers took these coins in. But what does the coin say? The coin says on it to the liberation of Jerusalem. Um, now, Bar Kochva, we know, um, was considered to be Mashiach by Rabbi Akiva. And here's your Lag Boimer connection. Rabbi Akiva is connected to Lag Boimer. And Rabbi Akiva felt that Bar Kochva is Mashiach, which means that his revolt is related to Bias of Mashiach, even though it happened over 1900 years ago. So to find that coin, Erev Lag Boimer, at this time, I think, is another one of these signs of Hashem telling us, hey, you didn't wake up, Mashiach is very close. Music